before the beginning of time or the creation of the universe before the first pulses of life or the thoughts of man there was darkness not darkness like when a light is turned off but total perfect unblemished darkness somewhere in the void in an instant in the twinkling of an eye something came from nothing the cosmic event burned with the light of a trillion trillion suns and at that moment at that instant all the matter of the universe began its magnificent expansion toward infinity as the primordial clouds sped on their journey great swirls of matter became glued by the forces of gravity slowly spinning like giant tops these whirlpools of the universe took on shapes caused by the forces that created them spirals ellipticals irregulars all of them galaxies great collections of matter which harbor the birthplaces of stars islands of millions upon millions of solar furnaces drifting in the vastness of space one spiral in the vastness spun on its revolution once every 200 million years the milky way although this mass of 200 billion suns was not particularly unique it did contain one notable average yellow star this star that floated in one of the spiral arms 28,000 light years from the galactic center held its own swirls of matter as the clouds of matter swirled in ever tighter spirals individual bodies began to take shape planets heavenly spheres orbiting the Sun in lazy elliptical paths the exterior planets giants of enormous proportions spinning balls of gas with no solid surface Neptune with its great dark spot Uranus lying on its side rotating perpendicular to all the others Saturn with its gorgeous rings Jupiter with its great red spot and enormous size and out at the edge of it all planetoids like little icy Pluto so very far away the planets whose paths took them closer to the center of the solar arrangement took on different structures matter solidified and spheres with solid surfaces formed mercury closest to the stellar furnace its surface shows the scars of millennia of aerial bombardment venus obscured by clouds its surface bakes under temperatures of 800 degrees caused by an out-of-control greenhouse effect mars with its giant extinct volcano olympus mons and deep long mariner valley has a dull red rusty surface causing it to shine like a stoplight in the night sky the third planet though similar in size to venus developed in a far different scheme positioned at just the right distance with just the right atmosphere and just the right temperature this world earth that crystal blue sphere with its flowing prairies and emerald seas the cradle of existence harbored the promise of life in answer to that promise earth gave rise to a myriad of life living things of all shapes and sizes covered the surface of the planet from the smallest cells micro universes in their own right to complex organisms that would stimulate one's wildest fantasies many lived out their existence and passed from the earth forever while others flourished and took dominion over it creatures of the land 
who scratch out an existence for survival. Prey and predator, producer and consumer. Including the only organism that learned not only to survive, but to control its environment and the environment of every other creature on the planet, man. Creatures of the air, entities of sleek line and aerodynamics whose domination of the skies lasted for millions of years until it too was challenged by the inventions of man. Creatures of the sea, inhabitants of the birthplace of life, diverse organisms living in the cosmos of interspace, their lives moving endlessly from translucent light to shadow, to darkness, and then back to light. Water, the lifeblood of the planet, the substance that bonds all the organisms of the Earth together, covers two-thirds of its surface and shapes the continents and the land. It provided a medium for the first traces of presence. It was the beginning place, the starting point and because of that, it captured the imagination of man from the beginning of his existence. Through most of his history, man has been preoccupied only with the surface of the sea. For much of that time, he thought it was much smaller than it is. Only in the last 500 years has he begun to appreciate its enormity. Man is just now beginning to plumb the ocean's depths. In the last 30 years, there has been more exploration of those depths than in all the rest of history. This is largely due to man's technological development. Just as he has constructed devices and materials to allow him to explore outer space, he has also turned his eyes on the mysteries and wonders of interspace. Modern breathing apparatus and deep diving vessels have given man the ability to explore the deepest parts of the sea. Just as in his exploration of space, he developed instruments and techniques that allow him to obtain information from places where he could not easily go. Many astonishing discoveries have been made about the ocean depths, great mountain ranges, deep valleys, and broad flat plains have been found that dwarf any on the planet's surface. But. Given all the geological mysteries, nothing equals the variety and phenomenon of life in the sea. It is the life of the sea that draws man to it. Just like the animals of the wild are drawn to their origins, man too seems drawn to the birthplace of life. No one can make an accurate guess at the number of individual organisms that live there. Man continues to catalog the kinds of life in the sea, and new species are found by almost every expedition. The complexity ranges from the simple, exquisite single cells to the giants of the planet, mammals so large that their sheer size defy human comprehension. In his short stay on the planet, man has grouped life based on its similarities and in doing so has celebrated the variety of living things he has found. The life of the ocean is divided into distinct realms, each with its own creatures and organization. The tidal zone, where land and sea meet. Small, shallow pools that appear and disappear with the changes in the tides. Still yet another link with the cosmos. The rise and fall of the great oceans of Earth, the result of the moon's gravitational attraction on them. The realm of the shallow seas, broad flat shelves that hug the exposed lands of Earth. Reaching depths of only a few hundred feet, the tidal zone and the shallow seas contain a vast majority of the marine life of planet Earth. The deep ocean adds two zones to the layers of the sea, the zone of light and the zone of perpetual darkness, a reminder of the darkness before time began. 
As one enters the undersea world under the gentle rolling waves, he enters a world of beauty and color. Vivid shades and brilliant hues of rich color explode in front of him. He has entered a world where life abounds and his own limitations are all that hinder him. Life flourishes at every glance. The sea's inhabitants range from trillions upon trillions of microscopic creatures that fill the emerald blue surface waters to the 100 foot long, 150 ton blue whales, more than three times heavier than any dinosaur that ever lived. Life in the oceans depends on the sun, just as life on land. Plants capture its energy and produce food for all other forms of living creatures. Seaweed and the shallow sea help in this role but play a very small part. More than 99% of the plant life of the sea exists in the form of microscopic one-celled particles floating the upper 100 feet of the ocean. Though invisible to the naked eye, they are in countless numbers floating as specks of dust in a ray of sunlight. Drifting in this vegetable garden of the sea, Tiny animals of every description provide the beginnings of a great pyramid of life. In the shallow seas, the food supply extends to the bottom, providing a rich soup of nourishment for the organisms that live there. Nowhere is this fact more evident than on the great coral reefs of the world. In these waters, everywhere one looks he sees living things. Some are not so easily recognized. The very foundation of these communities are the corals that form great hotels of tiny creatures, whose surfaces take on the appearances of heavily cratered distant worlds or moons. There are animals here that look like flowers, but have names like tunicate or Christmas tree worm. Others, like the sea anemone, have the ability to move slightly from day to day, while still others, like sponges, must be satisfied to live out their existence in one spot, straining food from the microscopic soup. The rules here are simple. Eat, spawn, and be eaten. Sea urchins can literally scrape off rock to gain the prize of the algae that is stuck to it. Clams and other bivalves hide themselves to avoid the inevitable, while starfish, the stars of the sea, stalk them to pry open their shells and devour the soft insides. All kinds of marine life turn up on the shallow bottoms to eat the food that falls there. Worms burrow in the bottom coming out in search of small morsels that have made it through the thousands of mouths above. Sea cucumbers, slugs, and snails push along like mobile neon signs, scooping food into their bodies like miniature vacuum cleaners. Crabs of all shapes and sizes take on the role of the sea's custodians cleaning the remains of organic debris that falls to the bottom. Motion is added to the reef by the thousands of creatures that live there. Eels, their snake-like bodies undulating with the flow of the currents, their mouths opening and closing with rhythmic precision, hide in the deep crevices of the reef. Soaring creatures capture our imaginations like the spacecraft of our fantasies gliding ever so gracefully in their weightless space. The rays move over the reef like great birds passing through gentle currents. Fish, whose colors are even more vivid than those of the corals themselves. These sleek speedsters surround the reef in a flurry of movement their colors brilliant against the crystal blue background of their home. Some are simple consumers, living out their existence by accepting only what the sea offers them. Others actively pursue their meals from moment to moment. There are the predators, the lions of the sea, hunters and hunted. 
they are forever on the search for their next meal. The seas are man's last frontier on planet Earth. In the past, he has treated these great waters as little more than highways for ships. But now he has become aware of their vast territory, whose exploration is as challenging as that of outer space. To that end, scientists are continually developing new and better instruments for the study of the sea instruments that will allow man to explore fully this last great resource. Astronomers believe that in not less than three billion years our Sun will enter a red giant phase of its life. During this time it could swell to 100 times its present size. Temperatures on planet Earth will increase to the point that the great seas, the birthplace of life, will shrink in their basins and will eventually boil completely away, escaping with the atmosphere into space. Dust will have returned to dust. In the meantime, man must stand vigil as caretaker of this place we call home our cosmic spacecraft that travels the vastness of space. As he studies the stars, he must also study the lowly starfish. For through understanding not only his cosmic origin, but also his earthly beginnings, can he make the right decisions about his place in the universe.